So, I don't know if you guys just noticed. Just landed in Amman, Jordan. So it's day number two. Uh, we flew from Istanbul to Amman, Jordan. It was a great flight. It was beautiful. The airport was quite shocking. For me, it was beautiful. It was absolutely gorgeous. Miriam is stoked to be home. Miriam, how do you feel to be home? I feel great. I'm in my home country. What do you think? So yeah, I was so excited to show Justin Jordan. Um, it was just, you know, very emotional for me also to see my family for, you know, I haven't seen them for a very long time. But Justin, on the other hand, was really scared. And <laughs> I was scared and I was like, really like in a weird place because it was so empty. All the businesses were closed and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Then it came to realize that it was actually Ramadan. So a lot of the businesses were closed. Anyways, we went our separate ways. Marion went to with her family, and I checked into my beautiful Airbnb, which overlooked most of Jordan. And um, it was a beautiful place, beautiful spot with lots of nice sceneries. And I didn't regret staying there for a moment. Well, hello there. It's now 5.07 in the afternoon. We're looking for a cab, and I can't, and we can't get one. I don't know if you see these two kids. All right, we just got a cab. About to hop in and go for some dinner. Wait, what? No, I think we gotta go over to see some of Miriam family and then after if after- So gonna... since there was nothing to do, you know, I went to take a nap because I was absolutely tired and I'm pretty sure Miriam did the same when she went back to her um, family's house. However, we did had a meet up to go to the mall to get SIM cards for our phone because there was no way to communicate with each other. And uh, we hopped in a cab, went to the mall, got a SIM card, only to figure out Miriam's phone was not unlocked to use in Jordan. So we spent at least about two, three hours trying to get that figure out. Miriam is having a hard time getting her phone unlocked. But T-Mobile is working on it. And this is like the most hilarious T-Mobile representative, no matter how angry you are, you can't be angry at this dude. He's ridiculously hilarious. And he's trying his best to get it done. So fingers crossed, I hope she gets her phone unlocked because we don't want to run into the situation we ran into this morning. We were lost for about three and a half hours in a country I have no idea what to do or anything. I don't even speak the language. So it was harder on me and then it was epic. It was epic. I couldn't even, I was so scared I didn't even pull the camera out or anything. I was just trying to like stay low key and hidden until I was found. So I, I managed to find a Starbucks that has Wi-Fi, Google my location, walk back to my apartment. And luckily she was thinking the same thing. And we met up on the After apartment. After Iftar, we had dinner and uh, our little hiccup earlier, but we still managed to make it out. However, we ventured out into the streets uh, at night and um, we were looking for somewhere to go smoke hookah. So we were just asking for direction to Abdulli Boulevard, where it's like lots of stores and lots of hookah places and stuff. We can go and hang out. However, we found these um, these people on the street. They were actually smoking hookah on the street. And, you know, we just uh, decided to like ask them for direction. And they were so cool, man. And they were, we had a wonderful time, of course. We started talking about soccer and soccer unites the world together. And we, you know, they let us smoke hookah with them. But we finally made our way to the mall. What was your experience here like, Miriam? All right, I've never done this before to go up to strangers and try to attempt smoke hookah with them. <laughs> but it was so much fun. It was just, it felt like you got the adrenaline rush. So I enjoyed every second of it with Justin. And Justin definitely was not familiar with any of what was happening. But he was actually kind of a celebrity because everybody wanted to take pictures with him and talk with him and know where Guyana is. It was just so much fun. 
The entire day was like chaotic, trying to get Miriam's phone unlocked, trying to get stuff sorted out, and trying to understand the place a little bit more. And it's also Ramadan, and the place is like dead in the day, like they're really strict during the day, there's nothing else open. There's a very, very few places open for, for like for breakfast, lunch, and stuff like that. And if that, that's the, when the sun set in the night, they would go, everybody comes out and the place just get light. So now it's the place, the sun just set and all those, so this place is starting to get busy. So we're heading into the mall and we're gonna get hit the hookah lounge in the mall. So as we enter into the mall, you can see the security team transitioned over here from Istanbul, like there were scanners at the door. So here, um, we after we went into the Abdali Mall, we started wandering around. Um, it was getting busier as people started coming in, and uh, we were supposed to meeting uh, be meeting up with my cousin and go to this really nice hookah lounge um, on top of the mall. And we refer to hookah, by the way, in Jordan as argile. So if you say hookah, no one would really understand. So you gotta say argile. Going to this hookah lounge was an absolute. Uh different experience for me because you've, I've never been to somewhere like this. The, the quality of the hookah was so much more better and the price was 490 JD which is absolutely cheaper than what I would pay in the US for a hookah. I'll pay like twice as much for a hookah. Leaving the mall at 11.30 p.m. shocked me and this is where my experience in Jordan has changed. At 11.30 in the night the mall was packed and it's nothing that I've seen before and it was absolutely shocking. We then ventured out over to Rainbow Street, which was even more lively. People were out and about on the street. Vendors were out. We went to get uh, shawarma at this uh, place called Shi Shawarma. And we also had another hookah there on Rainbow Street we, because I just wanted to try it and see what the difference was. And it was great. The shawarma, Miriam, was the, that was the only thing that Miriam went to Jordan for was the shawarma. So we had shawarma. And that, that is how we end up concluding our night. I went back to my apartment, Miriam went back to her cousin, and um, we were done with our day one in Jordan, and it was short, but it was quite an experience. This was the end of day one in Jordan, uh, Amman, Jordan. It was a success, I would say, for the first day, and we were super tired, did not sleep at all. We did have some hiccups. Uh, with, com with, with communication, so we got that started out. So tomorrow episode is going to be the Arab wedding experience. I actually crashed a Arabic wedding and it was awesome. So check this one out tomorrow and I'll catch you guys later. Uh, don't forget to like, favorite and subscribe. And Justin's out. Miriam out.